and then that's uh, and then the rest is history, man. It came out pretty good. Yeah, I know, that's I was great. satisfied. With Fantastic. That. Yeah. Good question, by the way. Yeah. I worked on that all night. <laughs> <laughs> Last night at the bar. <laughs> You were there. I know what you were doing all night. It wasn't working on that question. <laughs> I must ask you a question. I'll save it for <laughs> what about you, Mr. Vincent Ward? What, when did your fateful day become uh, a, reality. a reality for you? Well, I, and I do know the answer. <laughs> My, unfortunately, uh, fateful day came when I was sitting in the makeup department. And there's a script sitting there, a new script. Just having to pick it up. I look at it, and I'm the type of person, I just look for Oscar, just look for Oscar. <laughs> I get to the very last page. Oscar dies? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so I promise you, it was probably not even two minutes later when, um, uh, Andy, Andy Lincoln Rick came in. He came in, he said, Vince, he said, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just read the script, man, and, I, and I'm sorry, I see that you, you're no longer gonna be with us. I said, I just read it, that's just now. <laughs> he was like, wait a minute, nobody called you, told you anything. I was like, no. He said, you just now read it. I was like, yeah. He said, I'll be right back. <laughs> Before I knew it, everybody, their mama was coming there apologizing. <laughs> All the big wigs, so, you know, one thing I can say about that guy, he's number one on the call sheet for a reason. Awesome, man. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's fantastic. Andy Lincoln is definitely... He carries the ball. He's, a, he's the ball. And really, he, works right. he works every day. He, mm -hmm. He's almost in every bloody scene. The first couple of seasons, he didn't have any days off. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing, amazing. He carries heaven load. Yeah. And then I know a lot of people get upset because he doesn't come to the conventions, but you have to realize this guy, like you said, he works every day. And his family is in, in a different country, so he's a family man. He wants to go home and spend time with his family. You can't, you know, judge him for that. Oh, but he works so he works hard. There's no, way, there's no way he could come in. He these works things. a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, what about you there? Little Temple. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, your, your demise. Can you tell us a little bit more? Wait, I didn't even know the show was still going on. <laughs> You're still doing The Walking Dead after that? What for? <laughs> That's what you get for trying to hook up with that, you know, that, that lady with the short hair. <laughs> what not that interesting, I promise you. What that interesting? I got told three weeks in advance the uh, the showrunner at the time, who also is one of he, he should be sitting with us. Clint Bazaar, good dude, uh, said, "Look, uh, now I'm thinking he's calling to you know get off into let's do some more stuff with Axel. Yeah, we are. He's gonna take a bullet to the head. <laughs> so you do your denial dance. What about that Alan? He's a real asshole. Let's get rid of him." No, no one likes him. He'll get his down the road. No one even knows who he is. So then we talked about some of the regulars, who I can't mention or won't, but yeah, that'd be good. Let's take her or him out. <laughs> nah, because everybody likes him. And, Anybody uh, but Axel. And so, you know. <laughs> no, Axel. So then you, you know, you embrace it you recognize well this is your job your job is to serve the story so he invited me again to the writer's room i said nah i don't they do fine i don't want to mess up the gumbo but i would say this and i offered some ideas and so the whole idea at that time of the season was to pull the carpet out from underneath the audience you and uh, throw a gut punch and uh, it was important for me not to let you know it was coming i wanted it to be a real peaceful happy, sad kind of day. And uh, I was really proud with how we, we pulled that off. And, uh, and you know, like Michael and, and Vincent were saying, is the, the cast, at first they didn't know. And, and Glenn had asked me, can you just give me a few days so I can talk to everybody? And then once they find out, they come up to you and they're, they're so sorrowful. And every one of them, I just sat and looked at them and said, you have no idea how close it was to being you. <laughs> 
you will not, you better be damn glad that it's me because you are on a, a perilous ledge. And, and so, you know, then you pull it off and uh, I was just really proud of how we, we did it. I think Axel had a lot more to do as did Oscar and as did Merle, but really I think for what, how we serve the show, I think we're all very proud of it and, and, and very happy to present that to y'all. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, the arcs on all these characters, these three characters you see in, you know, all of us, we all have our arcs, whether they're a, a longer, mine lasted a little bit longer than that, but it's beautiful, you know, it's it's well done. Yeah. And some of them come as a real surprise, like yours, yes. and some of them come as like, you know, I think once you realize Merle was going in, Merle was not coming out. It could have come out. You know, I, I don't go, I don't, I, did, I didn't plan it and, and, and uh, work my internal, do my, my internal work thinking that I'm going to go in and not come out. You know, I'm going to go in and do the mission and get out and make an exit. You know, that's what I'm always thinking. Yeah, it wasn't a kamikaze, it wasn't a suicide. Oh, oh shit, no. You were going to be a big ass. Girl, come through? No way. No way. No, I, I was going to go in, pop the governor, pop off as many guys as I could and make my exit. But, you know, like, what I liked about Merle's thing is the whole character arc. It was it was it was freaking biblical. It was Paul. He he really had come to be brought to his knees, not on that roof, but maybe that's where it started. But brought to his knees to to turn the corner when he lets Michonne down in the car, which is it was it was I mean it was just beautiful and it was great work. And uh, and the thing with Oscar too. I thought it was really because he was so dear to Axel that uh, we actually shot a scene where Axel got in in Rick's face in his grill, and we actually had a, a, a fight. But then we recognized it was so heavily loaded on in, uh, on Rick that he had to deal with Axel for taking Oscar out, and getting him killed. Then he has to deal with the new players and Tyrese and then see his vision of Lori, it was just too much, so we scrapped that. But yeah, they, it was, yeah, everyone had a piece. Yeah, I knew once, once, once I went to Woodbury, I knew I wasn't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it, I told Lou, I was like, dude, I ain't coming back. He's like, what'd you read? I said, nothing. <laughs> I just got a feeling I'm not coming back. And I did. <laughs> How about some questions? Who's got a question? Come up, either stand up, be real loud, or come up to the mic, whatever you want. That's good. Come on, we'll start, start in on those. Okay. Line them up. Come on. Uh, Don't first, be shy out there, you guys. Can you hear it? Yep. Yeah, we hear, okay. hear it. Well, first of all, thank you all very much for coming down to the Rio Grande Valley. Oh, yeah. Uh, different types of roles, but specifically you, Mr. Rooker. What? Your roles have always been very colorful. Lovely. From, from Mississippi burning to slither to walking dead. Do these roles pick you, or do you pick these roles? <laughs> and the same question applies to you all as well. I pick my nose. <laughs> In the car. That's what's good. I don't know if there's anything picking going on. No. It was like... You, you don't know what's on your plate until it comes across your the desk or whatever or your agent calls you, you know. Um, a lot of people ask me questions like, man, why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do that film? And I'm like, dude, you who are you talking it. about? It ain't my choice, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, I, the, how it works is the agents get breakdowns and, and managers get breakdowns and, and they look through the breakdowns and go, oh, wow. This, this could be this could be Rooker or you know like, and it could go the other way too. You have the producers in the studio going, no, we want this is the short list. These are our one, two, three choices. Try to get them if you can, but then you move on from there, right? And a lot of times my names are on on some of those lists, and um, and uh, luckily and uh, thank goodness that um, many of those names that come before me go like, no, I ain't going to. Uh, no, I'm busy, man. I gotta go on vacation. Then all of a sudden, well, there's there is Rooker. <laughs> hey, we like that cat. That cat's good. Or sometimes he can do that. They'll tell you 
which is a case in point, I'm actively on a movie right now where I was told Michael was uh, on it. Oh, Ruger's doing it. Oh, I guess I will too. That's cool. <laughs> He's not doing it. I'm, I'm not doing it. I haven't even heard of it. So sometimes you get hoodwinked by your yeah, agents. Yeah, they, they just they tell you just to attract other. Sometimes they lay they lay out these names, and sometimes they lay out one name. Oh yeah, yeah, Rooker, and then all of a sudden they're going, yeah, yeah, he's, he's going to be good in this role, meaning that we really don't have him, but you're reading it into like, oh, you got, okay, you got Rooker, oh, you got, oh, you must be for real. You got Luke, you got Luke, you got, you know, you got, you know, Cruz or whoever, <laughs> you know. So sometimes it happens, you know, um, but uh, I don't know if they choose you, you choose them. Mostly that's how it's sort of like a technical thing. But you ultimately have the final say. say whether you want to do it or not do it. Plain and simple. I ain't turning so nothing down. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I like these, I like these coming to play, right? Yeah, yeah. shooting how much it is, you know. All right, um, it's two little questions. First one is from Ms. Rooker. Um, is it too bright in here? Yeah, it's too bright. I don't like brightness. <laughs> What's it too? <laughs> and, uh, and the second question is, uh, throughout the whole Walking Dead, you know, through season four, right? Um, through filming, have you guys had any like fun stories to tell us? Very no. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all fun stories. All they're they're all fun fun. stories on the Walking Dead. <laughs> the fun stories are like about. Yeah, man, I, I popped my knee out. Oh, yeah, man, that tick was two inches under, under my skin. Those are the fun stories. I don't I've know, lost fun 12, stories. 12 pounds in two days. There's no fun story, man. This is a hard show. I'm telling you, the cats down there working on season four right now are working their tails off. They're sweating. They're getting They're getting hurt. They're, yeah. Mosquitoes, ants, all it, of it. It is a tough show. But there are fun things that happen yeah, in the much. moment. Uh, you know, some of the interesting things are that, in my experience, food. The, the very beginning, of course, you know, we call them walkers. Uh, you know, zombies walkers, but we call them walkers. So they're all over. And they're a little unnerving. And all of a sudden, um, you get used to that. At first, I was like, oh my God, what am I standing next to all day? And then. You start talking to them, and you're talking current events and politics, and good looks for me, having to smoke with them at break, you know, a craft what service. What about when they sit down next to you and lunch? Oh, yes, they're oh, yes. Some fun stories, right? But then all of a sudden, they leave at the end of the day when you're leaving, and it's some hot chick. <laughs> and you're like, that was you under all that? Golly, I don't, you know, come on, wait a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, you wouldn't say word and word. You would not believe. You would not believe what so it, people it's look like funny. in your life. <laughs> there was one time it was really funny for Vincent and I. We were out there in, in the courtyard, and all of a sudden, they came out of cell block Sears.